go. So when I think about that perfect barbecue plate, it's the trifecta that includes brisket, ribs, and sausage. And of course, if you're here in California, tri-tip somehow makes it onto the barbecue plate. Uh, pulled pork, of course, is a very common staple. But again, just keep coming back to that OG trifecta. It has to include links on that plate as well. So this past week, I took a dive and tried to make my own sausages. But if you notice in the opening sequence, I had brisket, I had the sausages, but I had pulled pork. And the reason for that is simply because I needed the pork shoulder and the brisket to form and make the sausages. And so this time around, it was pulled pork. And just as a quick note, the brisket that I made, you notice there's a ton of juice kind of flowing out of that thing. That's because I completely doused it with beef tallow during the wrapping phase. I have that video linked as well if you wanna watch uh, my first experiment with using beef tallow. Again, shout outs to Jeremy Yoder, his channel's Mad Scientist Barbecue, and of course, Harry Sue's at Slap Your Daddy Barbecue. Those are the two kind of YouTube videos that I was watching that I was inspired with to try the beef tallow. And again, it came out super juicy. Quick feedback on that though, I put way too much tallow and the bark softened up and I do think it actually changed the flavor a little bit. It made it a little bit more bland because of how much beef tallow I added. So hopefully third time's a charm. And then for the pulled pork, all I did was simply season it up. I used actually Cosmo's Dirty Bird seasoning with a little bit of their sweet honey uh, seasoning as well and went ahead and just caked that up a little bit and I threw it in the pit barrel and it came out delicious. And so there's your brisket, there's your pork shoulder, but we're not talking about that. We're talking sausages. The sequence that's about to follow here is actually my second attempt at making sausages. So once you have all the different pieces, it's pretty straightforward. It's just very time consuming. You have to make sure that you cut up the meat into cubes. You have to chill them or freeze them for a little bit just to get it so that the blades will cut it a little bit easier. You take all of that, you take your rub and that turns into a paste, you mix it all together, and then you feed that now through your meat grinder on it with a coarse dye. And in this case, we also had the jalapenos. Jalapeno. And so I dropped in eight jalapenos periodically to get that um, chopped up in there as well. And then from there, you just give it a good mix. I did it for about three to five minutes. And then from there, it's off to stuffing the sausages and getting the casing and everything ready. So the recipe that I use for the sausages here is essentially a modified version of what's available on Chud's Barbecue, their jalapeno cheddar sausage. So basically it's the four pounds of brisket point, four pounds of pork shoulder start, and then I'll have the pretty much the rub mixture, all of that stuff in the description so you could see. I wanted just a little bit heavier on the pepper and I used smoked paprika and just kind of dialed the ratios back a little bit. Okay, so for this particular stage, I went ahead and got the haka, I think it's haka, 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 Hacka sausage stuffer. And there's a variety of different ones. I think I just got a middle of the road one. But one of the challenges I had with that is it's pretty much a two person job when you're trying to crank the sausage stuffer. So if you notice here, I actually put on two large C clamps and kind of had that onto the table. And that way I could crank it as it's kind of pressuring and pushing down the meat there. It'll actually hold the entire sausage stuffer in place so then I can work the casing. At this point in the video, again, this is my second time making sausages. If you notice I'm doing something wrong or if you have some advice to give me, feel free to drop it in the comments. I would love to hear it, read it and interact with it. It. Okay, so after we finished the casing process, then I took all of those sausages and I moved them over to the pellet grill to cold smoke them at 160 degrees. One hour into it, I checked it. Then about the two hour mark, I wiped them off a little bit and then the three hour mark, I went ahead and pulled them and threw them all into an ice bath. After they sat in the ice bath for about half an hour, 45 minutes, I put them back on the pellet grill. It was about 270 degrees and I let that go for about 20 to 30 minutes. Now in my case, I think my pellet grill runs a little hot. I'm using a Camp Chef Woodwind and I think it ran a little hot. It cooked up way faster than I thought it was. So instead of going for a solid 25 to 30 minutes, I started hearing the juices popping out of the casing and I noticed that about 20 minutes when I tempt one of them they were well above 170 degrees and I was like okay that's unfortunate so I went and pulled all of those off and then chopped them all up and this is what you've got so this platter that you saw in the very beginning of the video that was me pulling off those cooked sausages at the final stage and plating everything ready to go so here are some of my lessons that I've learned so far in making sausages the first time pretty straightforward practice makes perfect I would say the second thing I learned is don't be afraid to pop the casing. As I was stuffing the sausages, I noticed that a 
lot of them were actually understuffed. And that can attribute to some of that shrinking, shrivelly look of your sausage after you are done with it. And the third lesson I think is mainly learned from the first time I made these is don't skimp on what kind of meat you're putting into your sausages. I've always heard folks say, gosh, when you, you know, cut off your brisket or your pork shoulders and you're just trimming whatever primary piece of meat you're working with, you can just take all of that and make sausages with it. But you have to be also mindful too of what is your kind of lean meat to fat ratio because you could end up with this very oily, greasy, shrivelly, gooey kind of sausage after you're done with it if it's all just packed with fat. And that is kind of what happened with my first one. It was like super salty, super fatty, super oily. But I think this second round, much better. I wish that final stage, that final stage and that cook didn't overheat those sausages so much. I've got like half of them now that are a little shriveled, but the flavor is on point. Thank you Chud's Barbecue for the recipe. Thank you all for watching. And thank you all for supporting the channel. This has been really fun so far to share my experiences with all of you and interacting with all of you in the comments. Please click subscribe and like if you are feeling the content. And if you are not feeling the content, I think you can go ahead and hit the like button twice and it, it does something. All right, y'all, we'll see you next time. And until then, who's smoking? <laughs>